My name is Felix Nyberg and I'm a Global Product Manager at The Crosby Group and welcome to today's edition of Ask the Expert. Today we'll be answering a question that we received from multiple people recently and the question is, I've heard about hydrogen embrittlement and how it poses a risk to lifting in marine environments. What is it and how can I avoid it? So this is a great question. Uh, hydrogen embrittlement is really a term that's become a commonplace in the industry in the last decade or so. And there still is a lot of confusion, both about the term itself and how to mitigate the risks. Hydrogen embrittlement or hydrogen induced cracking, as it's often referred to, is caused by the inward diffusion of hydrogen into the steel. So the steel then becomes brittle and when you apply a load or a stress to it, it then cracks. Uh, and there's really the same way that there's no fire unless you have three components. You need to have fuel, you need to have oxygen, you need to have heat. There's no hydrogen embrittlement unless you have three components as well, as seen in the diagram below here. So you need to have a, a tensile stress, as you can see below in the diagram. You need to have a susceptible material and you need to have a hydrogen source. And hydrogen can enter the steel in basically three ways. So hydrogen can become embedded in the steel in the raw steel manufacturing process in the steel mills. However, we've been manufacturing these products for a long time and we've been working with steel suppliers for a long time as well to develop processes to avoid this issue and all of our products have a low amount of hydrogen in them. The second part where you can enter is in the production of the products themselves. So in processes such as welding, uh, for example welding of mastelings, or acid cleaning, the uh, hydrogen can enter into the material. However, when you have a vertically integrated manufacturer such as the Crosby Group, we can control all, all those processes because they're made in-house and we can ascertain that we don't have any hydrogen or as little hydrogen as possible entering the material uh, during production. The third way for hydrogen to enter the material is in use. So when steel starts to corrode, as steel tend to do in an offshore environment, it, the chemical reaction releases hydrogen into the steel. And this is of course difficult to avoid, but it can be prevented to a certain extent with either a sink rich uh, coating or another protective uh, coating such as hot dead galvanization. And for lifting products, you really want to have a light but a strong product. But when you have, when the strength increases, the hardness also tends to increase and the steel becomes more susceptible to hydrogen embrittlement. And as you can see here below, 41 Rockwell and above is really when you have an increased risk of hydrogen embrittlement. And 39 Rockwell and below, you have a minimized risk of hydrogen embrittlement. So one of the main objectives of designing a product is that is resistant towards hydrogen embrittlement is reducing the hardness. And there's a common misconception that grade 8 can always be used in an offshore environment. Grade 10 should never be used in an offshore environment. And the grade is not really that important. What is important is the hardness. And there are many grade 8 products that are out there that are a lot harder than grade 10 products designed for the offshore environment, for example. So for the manufacturer, the steel design is really where it all begins. And there are three main factors uh, to consider. First is the grain size. Then we have the carbon content and then of course we have the alloys that goes into the steel. So by decreasing the grain size, decreasing the carbon content as well as adding different alloys into the material, you can create a steel that is resistant against hydrogen embrittlement but at the same time retains a higher strength. And the production process is of course also important. Uh, forging, any welding or heat treatment all affect the final characteristics of the product. And using the product, the tensile stress that comes from putting forces are impossible to avoid. I mean, after all, these are lifting products designed for lifting loads. Uh, but the tensile stress significantly increases the closer you get to the breaking strength of the product. And such situations may arise when you proof test, during shock loading, when overloading a product, or when repeatedly lifting close to the capacity of the product. And for the manufacturer, this issue, mo issue mostly relates to proof testing of the products. When we proof test our products, we go up to two or two and a half times the working load limit, depending on the product and the standard. And that tensile stress can, however, be reduced by using a fixture when proof testing to distribute the load or a stress relief process afterwards. 
for the operator, the biggest risk comes from shock loading or overloading the product. But it can also come from products that are sent in to, for recertification, for example, and proof testing. And in most cases there, people will not use a fixture when proof testing and consequently point load and increase the tensile stress. So some practical tips for personnel uh, using or procuring lifting equipment for harsh environments. The following considerations are important as they relate to workplace safety. Uh, make sure that you have the right equipment. I mean, that is really number one. Uh, inquire with the manufacturer, how do you design this product? How do you manufacture it? And how do you certify it? And hardness and sharp impact values are in this specific application more important than the grade. Uh, protect the uh, coating of the product is also important. If we can uh, stop hydrogen from entering the product whilst it in, is in use, that's of course also safer. And that also increases the uh, service life of the product and lowers the total cost of the product over its lifetime. Uh, if operations take place close to the maximum capacity of, of the product uh, repeatedly and often, consider going up one size uh, to increase the overall strength of the product. Decrease the velocity of the, the lift and never shock load. And also, super important, adapt your inspection frequency and procedures for the environment and application. To summarize, lifting even just 20 kilos or 50 pounds is always risky. Extreme environments makes it even more so. And it's important to take proper considerations in the selection, the procurement and the use of lifting equipment. So if you want to know more about this, uh, we actually have a webinar coming up on the 8th of September. It will be on at 8 a.m. U.S. Central Time and 3 p.m. Central European Time. So make sure to catch that, sign up on our website and learn more about this interesting topic. So thanks to everybody who submitted this question and we'll see you next time on Ask the Expert. Mm -hmm.